This is the third part of the lecture uh, on outward personality theory. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you um, the concept of motivation that directs our behavior and also the personality development and how healthy personality could develop. So um, the notion of motivation uh, on outward theory uh, is very different from the psychoanalysis, the, the, the previous uh, theory that you have learned. So motivation on the terms of Alport's theory is more like the outcome of cognitive processes. So it's more like conscious process instead of the unconscious process. Um, so this is something that we could direct and that we could uh, shape. So it's very different from the uncontrollable aspects, the uncont uncontrollable characteristics of, uh, of instinctual motivation in the eyes of psychoanalysts. Uh, so Alport truly believes that uh, motivation is a form is a form of uh, cognitive processes and it's very vital in our personality so there are two different uh, types of our motivation so the first one is that the functional autonomy and it shapes the idea that uh, our motivation is not connected to to our prior experience so it's it's completely separated from uh, from our past experiences uh, and our past experiences that shapes uh, our, the motivation that shapes our past experience is something that uh, proportionate uh, it, something that is completely uh, not related to our current uh, motivation and it's autonomous yeah and independent and it's uh, it's it's bounded to the context where uh, where that motivation initially appeared. So it's completely different. Yeah. And also, there are, uh, there is a uh, second part, the second aspects of our motivation that is perseverative, functional aut autonomy, which means that there is a certain uh, motivation that directs our routine in a more like habitual behavior uh, that uh, it could result uh, in a behavior that is more repetitive and it also shapes our routines and this is a behavior that does not necessarily need external reward and it could be um, um, something that uh, that is repetitive and not very meaningful in our lives and sometimes uh, when the actions or the goal is not longer is no longer um, serve its purpose then it could cease uh, initially it could cease automatically and it's not considered as the integral part of our personality so even though this motivation is very important in shaping our habitual uh, habitual behavior it's not integral it, it's not not very important that shaping our personality because it's not very meaningful in shaping our personal growth and the last part of our motivation is that the appropriate functional autonomy and Alport says that this is very central and very important that shapes our unique traits our unique personality and understanding this appropriate uh, functional autonomy is essential yeah to um, to investigate uh, the motivation that directs our behavior. And appropriate uh, actually derives from uh, proprium, which means ego or self. So this motivation is actually directed into, directed towards personal growth, and it reflects our aspiration and something that we want to achieve in the future. It, it also reflects our wishes, hopes, and our uh, desire what we want to uh, uh, the desire that uh, something that we want to achieve in the future and the next part would be the the concept of personality development how, how our ego develops so um, Alport here describes seven stage uh, in our early lives uh, that uh, that has completely different uh, characteristics, uh, different uh, experience, yeah, different experience when this uh, when ourselves develops, yeah, evolves into a more mature and health healthy personality in adulthood. 
Uh, so the first stage would be the bodily selves. This is where we uh, try to, when we uh, when we are aware that our physical entity is separated from other people, and we are becoming aware that our existence is separated from other people, and we could differentiate our bodily experience, our uh, physical entity, to other people' physical entity. So this is. Um, this is um, process. This process happens, especially when we, when we are, when, when we were in infant. And the second uh, stage would be the self identity. Uh, this is where uh, we re- we start to realize that our identity um, is is intact, is stable, even though our physical uh, our physical appearances evolves over time. So this is where we know that we are an independent, autonomous, but stable, even though we are distinct from other people. So this is sometimes uh, we aware that we that our body, that our physical appearances could change, but what makes us unique, our personality, is stable, is actually stable. And the third part would be the self-esteem stage. This is where the children recognize others, people. Uh, praise and recognition to their uh, to their achievements, and the fourth stage would be uh, we try to uh, recognize the objects that uh, and other people are the part of their own world. So this is where children uh, knows that uh, that other people also has their own privacy. So uh, they they try to not. Uh, not um, disturb other people's privacy. And the fifth stage would be um, the self-image stage. This is where the children try to um, try to uh, hold an idea of the ideal self-image. This is where they try to internalize their parents' expectation towards themselves. And this is where they try to fulfill this uh, expectation and where they uh, sometimes uh, aware that sometimes they could fail to reach this expectation. And the sixth stage would be uh, this is where the children try to apply reason and logic, and this is during the early uh, early stage of school, and they try to do they try to use reason and logic uh, to. Uh, to as a solution to their problems, and the uh, seventh seventh stage would be uh, a process that happens during your uh, during your uh, teenager teenage years. This is where try, uh, this is where uh, young people uh, formulate their plans, their long term plans. So they build their aspiration towards a more uh, more distant future. And then after that, we reach the adulthood. So this is where uh, our personality has become more autonomous, more independent of our childhood uh, motives, and we try to function rationally in the present, and we consciously shape our own lifestyle. So this is where we choose our own ways, and we choose our own uh, ways to cope with problems. And the last part of this lecture, the last part of this section would be the explanation of healthy adult personality. So what is actually a healthy personality according to Alport is that uh, there are two uh, characteristics uh, that, uh, that basically um, uh, indicates a healthy personality. So the first one would be a healthy personality could change and grow. Yeah, so being a stable uh, personality tend to be stable, but in order to adjust with your life uh, challenge, and also you to, in, in order to cope with your problems, we need a degree of flexibility. So that's why, according to Alport, healthy personality should be adaptable to this uh, challenge, to the life challenge, even though it could be uh, consistent in some ways, but a flexibility, a degree of flexibility should be needed in order to achieve healthy personality. And it could grow from being biologically dominated into a more mature psychological organism in adulthood. So 
we we see that healthy adult personality posits the idea of maturity so this is why uh, this is why also uh, the distinction between normal and abnormal personality is very clear so people who has people who has a more healthy personality healthier personality would be characterized by a more mature and adult mature uh, maturely grow uh, maturely growth individual so people who has problems with their psychological condition would be more characterized by their infantile or more childish way to cope with problems and the second characteristic that uh, that indicates a healthy adult personality is that the motivation our motivation to be to thrive in life it is more independent than our past so we don't bear our past as a burden to our motivation instead we become more separated so we kind of like living in the moment uh, stance of of, of, of of driving and directing our behavior so we do uh, we count our present times and also as our aspiration to the future as more important than our past experiences so this is the uh, the end of the of the third section of this lecture.